here I am. Here I stand. Eight years of college, master's degree, graduation with honors, and jobs lying dead in my dust. It's now or never. I need to find something steady. I need to be something bigger than myself. I need a corporation. Welcome, welcome. I'm Charles. Hi, Chester. Come on in. Go ahead and take a seat right here. Thank you. You know, I was, uh, I was thoroughly impressed reading your, uh, reading your resume that you emailed oh, me. Thank you. Quite. I noticed that you're, uh, your birthday was June 17th. I actually have my uh, portfolio here if you just want a quick review. That's pretty hot. I'm sorry? It's pretty cool. I'm sorry, I'm just so happy that I got this job. Well, I got the interview. I'm sorry. I don't, wanna, I don't mean to enjoy the rush, you know? Hey, man. Sometimes if you set a goal for yourself, you get excited, you know? Regardless of if you take the goal or not, if you accomplish it, you know, it still excites you, you know? I'm sorry, I can't help but notice, you're still set up for a... Uh, you got Christmas and you got a Buddha there. Ah, yes, yes, you see, because I'm open to any type of belief system or religion. Except for... Shintoism. You okay? Never better. <clears throat> anyway... Back to, back to the resume. It says that, uh, you got your bachelor's. You got your bachelor's degree. Yep. Uh, uh, you didn't include what field? What field was this? Oh, quantum physics. Quantum physics. You know, back when I was in seventh grade, everybody used to bully me. My penis was bigger than everyone else's. Excuse they, me? Used, they used to call me quantum dick. I'm sorry, I'm sorry but I, I don't find that to be an appropriate conversation here. I mean, I know this is your interview, but I'd rather just stick to everything that we've been doing up until this part of the conversation, if you don't mind. I have no idea what you're talking about. Now back to this high school valedictorian thing. That is some seriously sexy shiznit right there. Don't get that is some seriously impressive stuff right there. Oh, thank you, Owen. I put a lot of hard work into high school. That's good, that's good. I needed it. Now, if only you could put some hard work into something else. <laughs> Excuse me? Uh, the, the job. Yeah, yeah, you're right. All right. I don't worry. Don't worry, Mr. I'm sorry, what was your name? Ah, uh, I haven't formally introduced myself. Chester Chester Child Molester the Fourth. Wait, what? That's my name. I come from a long line of child molesters. Excuse me? It's the family name. And I'm the fourth. Oh, my God. I'm so sorry. Mm. Like I said, I'm Charles Finley. So yes. Sorry. So we continue. Okay. I'm just gonna... Hope you don't mind, but I asked you to include some personal stuff in here. Oh, absolutely. So I'm just gonna turn away from the resume for just a, just a moment. Yeah, absolutely. What do you ever have to do, man? I would like to point out that, uh... 
when you were in college, um, your fraternity was busted. Now, could care to shed a little light? I'm not, I'm not, I don't want you to think I'm singling you out, but just, just trying to clear up just a couple of things on here. I've had a few, uh, mentions of that in past interviews, and it's actually, yeah, that was, I was not involved in that. That was about, jeez, two, three months after I left that school. Mm, okay, and they just kept okay. it up with it. They put, they kept me in their records until, uh, a couple of months ago, actually. Actually, well, you know, regardless of if, if you were in the, uh, the fraternity or not, you, it still shows me that, you know, you were able to, regardless of, like, your worth ethic, you were still able to have some sort of fun, because, you know, fraternity is a type of, uh, you know, like a leisurely activity. I was in a fraternity once, but the guys that I knew got mixed up with Shintoism! See that you, uh, you interned at a hospital. Yeah, Princeton. Care to tell me a little bit about that? Well, there wasn't really much to tell. I was just... I obviously didn't do anything uh, super dangerous. I was just behind a desk most of the time, answering calls, directing calls. Pushing paper? Pushing paper, yeah. Mm. Pushing pencils. It's pretty tasty. Um, let me ask you something. Do you do any uh, necromancy over there? Necromancy? Uh, no. I, Bringing I spirits back to life, reanimating I'm them. aware of what it is. I don't think we did that. <clears throat> didn't think you would. My uncle fucks kids, and he, uncle, is a, he is a riot, man. Was that his name? No. But he dabbled in necromancy. He also fucks kids. Well, that's a family secret. So don't tell anyone, otherwise I'll have to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean it. I'll rip your fucking skin off. <laughs> well, that more or less uh, covers everything that uh, I had intended to ask you. Thank you for coming down. Oh, sure. Uh, I have one question left. Uh, okay. One final question. A lot of people view this question as cliche, but I like to think of it as uh, like a trust-building exercise. Mm -hmm. Just give me an example. Give me an insight into your mind, into the way you think, into your thought process. Give me the greatest example you can come up with of a time you went above and beyond for like a coworker or a customer or just something out of place of work. In 2004, when I still worked at Princeton, I was uh, behind Good the desk, job. as usual. Not for this guy. He came in head-on collision. He was oh. involved in head-on collision, and mm. he's just mangled. Mm. This, he's essentially disemboweled. He's got nine broken ribs, mm. and he's got a perforated stomach wall. Uh. So, our doctor mm. is out. Uh. I don't know where he was, but I don't remember. Our phone line was down. We had some guy working on it for the entire day. <clears throat> and uh, had no one else, no other doctors in <clears throat> that, would, uh, that worked on this kind of case before. <clears throat> so we had the nurse <clears throat> and they had me hold, essentially holding this guy's insides in. Oh, you got to hold him in. For 25 minutes oh, or you so. Ain't no minute, man. <clears throat> until the doctor showed up. <clears throat> he showed up right on time. Oh, this, you okay? is, this is getting too steamy for me. Ah! Uh, what the? Oh okay, okay. Ah! Uh, no! Uh, what? What are you doing? Ah! Uh, you're hired. I look. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Thank you for the hospitality and everything. But uh, I, you're welcome. I, I don't uh, think this is the kind of job I would be comfortable uh, with. So I appreciate the offer. Uh, I'm just gonna keep looking. Uh, I have a few promising uh, things anyway. Uh, I'm just going to take my portfolio oh. and my suit. Okay, you can oh. keep it. And uh, I will be changing oh. my number it, very soon. Yeah. Come over here and clean down this mess in slow motion.
Covering up your tracks Like your prescription to the tracks And it gives me panic attacks Cause we had sex and it hurts like an axe How can I be a liar if my cunt's on fire? How can I be a liar if my cunt's on fire? How can I be a liar if my cunt's on fire? How can I be a liar if my cunt's I'm sorry for what I did I should've never touched that kid I loved you but I thought you should know That I thought you were clean but you were just a hoe How can I be a liar if my cunt's on fire? How can I be a liar if my cunt's on fire? How can I be a liar if my cunt's on fire? How can I be a liar if my cunt's